Hey guys, this is the Revolutionary Mail. My name is Alex, and today I'm going to be reading an article from Bold.com, actually written by a man, believe it or not, um, called A Guy Reveals Eight Reasons Men Like Dating Strong, Independent Women by uh, Brian Zarpentine. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. This is probably going to be enjoyable. Number one, um, the prologue, I suppose. Unfortunately, it's not uncommon for strong, independent women to get a bad reputation on the dating market. That's right. It is not uncommon. However, that's usually more about insecure guys no, it's not. and not being able to handle a woman who has her act together. The truth is that badass women bring a lot to the table and make great partners. Here's what good guys find so appealing about the kind of women Destiny's Child was singing about back in the day. I'm not really sure what the Destiny's Child reference is about. I probably should know that, though, given the fact that I'm the right age and grew up when they were popular, but I don't really care. Anyway, now the real number one. The chase is fun. One of the biggest things that helps distinguish strong, independent women from the rest of the pack is that they're not needy or willing to settle for less. That's right. They're um, incredibly, like, impossible to impress. They have unrealistic expectations, and they are a pain in the ass to be around. That's an incredible combination. That's something guys are really looking for. They might like having a boyfriend, but they're not going to lower their expectations just to find one because they're cool being by themselves while waiting for the right person. Well, that depends on what their expectations are. Are they expecting to marry some six foot six athlete who makes, you know, $10 million a year while they're some average woman? Well, then their expectations are not realistic. Um, we have to be, you know, we have to be clearer about what these expectations are because you know, poor Brian here doesn't actually articulate what those expectations are so we really can't know um, but most likely I'm going to assume that um, what we're really talking about here is that in the minds of these average women um, an average man is not good enough and that's gonna I, I, I haven't read the article yet uh, but I'm assuming that's gonna be a common theme here continuing on number one um, this can make it difficult for us guys to make a good impression and make these women uh, and these women that were worth dating. I mean, this can make it difficult for us guys to make a good impression and these women that were worth dating. However, deep down, we like the challenge, especially since we know it'll be worth it in the long run. Again, that's exactly the problem. If it's that damn difficult to get a woman to not necessarily be impressed, but just be open to a man, then that's not our fault as men. That's your fault as an individual woman. Um, if I have to be making, um, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars a year, or take you to some kind of fancy restaurant, or do this or do that specific thing to impress you, then you're dating wrong. You are doing it wrong. Number two, there are fewer games. I'm sure there are. For the record, some guys actually enjoy playing with your head. I'm sure there's, that some guys do, but we're not really talking about those guys. Uh, so I'm not really sure why he brings it up. However, most of the good, genuine guys out there are happy to forego playing classic dating games. This is exactly what we'll get if we can find strong, independent women. I'm not sure what he means by classic dating games because he doesn't mention any specifically. Um, so again, we're just going to have to assume. Um, this guy writes very much like the audience is in on what he's talking about, like they have some kind of insider knowledge. I guess, I don't know, maybe I'm not connected enough or whatever to actually know what he's talking about. Um, this is exactly what we'll get if we can find strong, independent women. These ladies are usually too busy building an empire to bother playing games. I wish we could stop referring to like owning a small business as um, like a music teacher um, who teaches out of her apartment. Like that's not building an empire. Okay. Um, I wish we could kind of stop talking in these terms. I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon, um, but whatever. Instead, they're upfront about who they are and what they want. For most of us guys, this is a great relief. Rather than playing guessing games, we know where we stand with a woman, which makes things so much easier. Yeah, it's pretty easy to know where you stand with a woman when she tells you that you're not good enough. That's pretty easy. When you can't meet an impossible standard, that's, that's very, very clear. 
Number three, they can take care of themselves. Independent women are that way because they know how to take care of themselves. They make sure they take care of their health and their bodies. For a guy, that means they stay in shape and always look good, which we obviously like. Yes, we do. Sure, it's a little ironic that strong women appeal to the shallow side of men, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, there's not anything wrong with being a man and being attracted to the way a woman looks. That's just nature. But one thing I do want to kind of mention at the outset here uh, is that if a woman is always talking about how strong and independent she is, she's likely compensating for an insecurity that she likely believes she's not as strong and independent as she wants to be. Um, because people who are strong and independent <laughs> typically don't go around um, saying that. You know, it's like the woman on a dating profile who says, I'm not here for uh, hookups. Well, a woman who has not had the misfortune, I suppose, of doing hookup culture, engaging in hookup culture, would never have to say that. You only, t you only speak about things in the negative when you've done them. that is banging sound um, okay number four they're much more interesting to talk to okay looks aren't everything but that's another area where strong independent women stand out from the others most of the women I know who would be described as being on the independent side of things lead interesting lives they travel try new things and go on adventures that means they always have something to talk about that means we don't have to worry about making small talk because there's never a, dull, a lull in the conversation. This is something I want to mention too um, that I've noticed a lot of in my time on the dating market. Um, if you are a strong, independent woman, why do you need me around? That's a problem. I don't want a strong, independent woman who doesn't need or want me. Um, that's going to be an issue. And I'm sorry, but for me personally, and this is just a personal statement, um, just because you travel and try new things and go on adventures, whatever that means, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you have something interesting to talk about. I've met plenty of women who have gone to places all over the world and couldn't articulate an interesting sentence to save their lives. So those two things are not necessarily, you know, uh, don't necessarily go hand in hand, but okay. Number five, they don't get jealous. Okay. Strong women tend to be a little more sophisticated when it comes to relationships. <laughs> that means they aren't needy and they aren't jealous. If we want to hang out with our friends without them, they don't freak out and lose their minds. In fact, they like it because they also value their alone time. Independent women understand that being in a relationship isn't the only thing in your life. Thus, the jealousy and drama remain at a minimum. That's fine, okay? Assuming it's true, which I don't necessarily know that it is, because I don't know that necessarily being strong and independent correlates to um, a lack of jealousy. Simply because a woman who, um, I would imagine, a woman who is so concerned with being strong and independent is likely a woman who uh, has trust issues. Otherwise, they wouldn't have to focus so heavily on being strong and independent. They can actually um, um, feel relatively safe putting their lives and their hearts or whatever in the hands of someone else, you know, giving that relationship a try, a shot. Um, they wouldn't need to be so goddamn strong and independent if they weren't afraid um, that if they weren't afraid of getting into a relationship and then losing the relationship. It very much comes, strikes me as you know, coming from a place of fear. But, you know, who am I? I'm just some average guy. Number six. Uh, we feel supported. Another great thing about independent women is that they know what it's like to focus on themselves and their personal goals. If we have a vision for our future in a professional sense, they understand that it's okay to put yourself first sometimes. As long as we show support for them, Strong women will always be able and willing to reciprocate that support, which is always nice to receive from your partner. Okay, that's good. I don't know that those two things are necessarily connected to each other, 
being a strong and independent woman who was actually supportive of somebody else, um, more, more likely than not, I would expect the opposite to be true. A strong, independent woman, I would imagine, is not very supportive because she's strong and independent. She's going out there and you know doing everything for herself. Uh, but okay, I mean, if that's a present, that's good. I mean, it's nice to have. Um, number seven, the bar is raised. Again, the thing with dating independent women is that we know what that they don't need us. That's a bad thing. That means we feel a little pressure to step up our game in order to keep them around. <laughs> oh boy. We're challenged to be our best selves, and that's a good thing. Strong women will always have high standards for their partners, and in a way, that forces us to become a confident and competent man. Admittedly, it's not always easy, but we know that it's always worth it. Again, this is an issue. Because when I read this, what I see is a compensating disorder, like a compensating issue. They create this unrealistic expectation they create these absurd standards for what their partner is supposed to be in order to protect themselves from actually having a stable long-term relationship because the point of creating expectations or standards that are difficult to meet or moving the goalposts so that if someone actually achieves a particular goal or acquires you know certain things you can then move it in order to um, keep the pressure on that way that person can never actually have achieved anything. And if you want, you have an excuse to break off the relationship. Wonderful. Now, this can come from kind of two different places. Overall, that sense of uh, maybe a traumatized woman who has relationship issues and is incredibly kind of insecure and doesn't feel safe in relationships. Or it could be um, come from a narcissistic woman who is um, trying to manipulate you into seeking this or seeking that for her own benefit in somehow, some way. So you have to be careful when it comes to these things. All right. Oh, and again, our partner's not needing us. When I hear that, I don't hear it in the positive sense that these people mean it. Obviously, we don't want codependency. We don't want... Um, people who rely on us to survive. That's not good. Um, we want interdependency um, so that our lives are interconnected and we build each other up and create more stability, more security, more safety um, so that we can expand out our lives. That's the point. Um, but when I read this, that's not what I read. That's not what I hear. Um, what I hear and what I need is that I don't need no man unless He's Superman, and that's dating or being uh, approaching relationships from a place of fear. And then number eight, the last one here. They take charge in bed. Last but not least, it's in the nature of strong women to take charge in bed, which is never a bad thing. They're not afraid to ask for what they want, which can make things a little easier and a lot more exciting. Again, take charge in bed and um, what was it? Not afraid to ask for what they want. Those two things are not the same. One is leadership. The other is not leadership. Asking for what you want or what you need in bed is not leadership. It's not being assertive. You can do that from a feminine place. A woman does not have to take, take charge to do that. Taking charge is masculine. They're very, very different. And I think that's what a lot of independent, strong, independent women don't realize, is that they're just dudes. They're guys in women's bodies. And a lot of men are not attracted to that, unless they're passive, more feminine men, um, who are the kinds of men that these women are never going to date in the first place. Uh, continuing on, the last one here. Um, there's no performance anxiety because they'll speak up if they want us to do something different. If there's one thing that separates strong, independent women, it's that they're great communicators. No, it has nothing to do with it at all. That means everyone's happy in the end. Strong, independent women are not necessarily great communicators. They may be able to go out and take what they want, go after what they want, but that doesn't mean they're a great communicator. That's the biggest theme I, I get from this entire article. There's this confusion 
around what being a strong, independent woman means and the behaviors that he's talking about. There's, a lot of them are not the same. They're not behaviors that would be typically be exhibited by a strong, independent woman. Not as I think of them. Um, but, you know, I guess Brian has a different perspective, which you know we can always appreciate here at the Revolutionary Mail. If you guys have any thoughts, any questions, any comments, go ahead and leave them in the uh, below the video. If you want to get in contact with me personally, there's an email address on my YouTube page. I look forward to uh, reading any insights or questions you guys might have, and I'll see you next time.